left and right. Those are um, the openings to his guttural pouches. Okay. And the strangled bacteria likes to live in a lymph node that opens up into the guttural pouch. So what often happens is it abscesses inside those pouches and then ruptures and then comes out those little slits and that's why you get that snotty nose. Oh, yuck. So those look good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. okay, go ahead and go ahead and okay. So now he he swallowed us into the esophagus here, so we're just gonna keep going and as long as it feels smooth you can keep going. And we'll look at his esophagus a little bit better on the way out. Um, it sort of collapses on you on the way in. Mm. You can change his head position a little bit. And... Give you the tour in a minute. <laughs> We're gonna put a little air into the stomach so we can look around more easily. Go in just a little bit more. Okay. So the part of the stomach that you're looking at is the non-glandular part, so it doesn't produce any acid, mm -hmm. um, and that also is the part that more frequently has ulcers in it. Um, once I get this blown up, you'll see that there's a pretty distinct line between the non-glandular and the glandular part. Oh wow. But, um, so most of the non-glandular ulcers, so this is where we're coming into the stomach here, that's going into his esophagus up there. So we're wrapped all the way around that part, okay. and then that's where all the acid's produced. So okay. Go ahead in if, you, if it's feeding okay. We'll rinse that part off in a minute too. I'm gonna try to blow this part of his stomach up a little bit and then we're gonna see if we can sneak under that part and uh, take a look down there. There's a couple little spots here. We call this the lesser curvature because it's just smaller. Um, did he just swallow you in there? <laughs> I like the way you're bending over to look underneath I there. Know. <laughs> it's really, I can't stop myself. You did a really good job fasting him. That makes this a lot easier. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can you go in at all, Julia? Mm -hmm. Get you any further down. So <clears throat> just keep going until you can't go. All right. So this is looking down. You can stop kind of at the bottom of his stomach here where it goes into the small intestine. Okay. Easy baby. That's, Easy. A, that's an ulcer right there. Okay. Back up a little bit, just a tiny bit. Yeah. A little bit more, sorry. Um, and sometimes 
these ulcers down here can be even more painful than the non-glandular ulcers, so that could be significant. I think that's the only spot though. Back up. Just uh, back up a little bit more. And keep coming back slowly. Okay. Their stomach's constantly moving while we're doing this. So yeah. It's a little bit of a struggle sometimes. Just want to go in a little bit more, sorry. There's a little cluster of them over there. I'm trying to get this bubble in my way. There you go, a little um, bit. Let's see what you're talking about. Do you want to there? Yeah. Just some bruising down here. I know, I know. Yeah, it, that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so why would there be bruising in that? It's just another way of that tissue, you know, reacting to not being healthy. Okay. So it's basically ulcerated. If you even if you look at it, you can almost see there's like a little layer of tissue kind of peeling off just a little bit there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think those are significant. I think they could definitely be explaining some of your signs. Okay, back up. Um, let's come back to a normal spot. Oh, okay, buddy. Okay. Those are little bots. Bot larvae. Okay. It's not a big deal. Everybody's going to have them. It's just. Yeah, especially this time of year. Yeah. But what we're looking at is right here along this line. That's a common area for ulcers. So do the bots in and of themselves mm -hmm. create an ulcer? Uh, usually uh, not. Oh, the side, Jason. Jason, it's to the, it's over there by the bathroom, kind of. No, no, that uh, that door. So this area actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna rinse some of that stuff off. Go in a little bit, but. That kind of smaller curve over there that we were looking at earlier definitely had a few spots on it, and I'll try to point them out. Go ahead, in. All right, that's good. So there's just kind of these little, almost islands of tissue with a little hole in the middle. Mm -hmm. And those aren't super active ulcers, but he's definitely had ulcers there before. Um, so in that part of it, I know you had said he um, he would roll after he ate. Mm -hmm. Is that has that been consistent since July? Pretty well, yeah. Okay. 
So every time he eats, he rolls pretty much. I would say eight times out of ten. Yeah. Definitely not feeling good in some form or fashion. And it, I guess it's just the grain that irritates it? I mean... Yeah, it, you know, when they're eating, it actually causes more release of juices in their stomach, so it kind of flares it up a little bit. That doesn't look super happy there. Um, let me take a picture if I can get it clear. Struggle with one, <laughs> yeah, it just looks a little like bubbly and almost blistery. Yeah, yeah, that that is um, not normal. And not super like red and bleeding sort of ulcers, like you might think of when you think of people ulcers or anything, but just not not healthy tissue there. And what that tells me is that probably in the past he did have some gross, you know, bloody, really ulcerated areas that were deeper in the tissues trying to heal these spots here. Mm -hmm. um, so he's probably one that is prone to getting ulcers. Um, I think he spent the first five years of his life uh -huh. in a stall because oh, okay. when we got him and turned him out on pasture he didn't even know which weeds not to eat <laughs> and like we turned him out world. on a dry lot that was full of you know non-edibles and he went out there and was just so happy he grabbed a big old mouthful and then dropped oh, it and yeah. then went to the next one and grabbed a big mouthful and it was like at least he dropped it yeah yeah, he didn't know anything about herd socialization. He had to learn all that. He said it's a whole new world. And when he ate, when I got him, he kicked the walls furiously. It's like that's what we did in the barn. Yeah. under that fluid that's there and we'll be pretty much done. We'll look at his esophagus on the way out. When he does eat his grain, I know you don't feed him a whole lot, but does he um, gobble it up or? No, he... he's pretty normal okay. chewer, eater, speed wise. And... Mm -hmm. Do you feed him any hay? Uh, yeah, anytime we go anywhere. He's, I'm big on having hay in front of them. Um, all the time. How about when he's eating his grain at home? Does he get hay with that or does he just no. get the grain? Okay. Just gets the grain and as soon as he's done eating, he's back out on pasture. Or that's not even true because the only <laughs> time they get grain is when we ride. So maybe oh, a Saturday. Okay. And that's why they only get a teeny amount because gotcha. he's not used to grain every day. So it's not like he's doing this rolling thing every single day. Just... No, no. And when you are graining them, are you usually taking them on some pretty big rides at that point, or is it just, you know, any time? It's a day ride. We'll go to the Trace and something like that. Just trying to, like, is there a stress association with it? Or, sure. You know, need things out. All right. Let's come out slowly. And we'll take a look at his stuff. looks really good so and this would be probably even before the area that he was choked in so that whole area that she found the choke in mm -hmm. probably it looks really normal so I think he you got him there fast enough before he bruised or damaged his esophagus good and sometimes I think they're just kind of loose chokes and maybe they're even up higher or mid esophagus and when we put the tube in it just shoves it down to ah. kind of a stopping point too but it does like to get hung up right before it gets to the stomach. And we're out. 